The Changeling A woman was one night lying awake while her husband slept, when the door suddenly opened and a tall, dark man entered. A fierce aspect, followed by an old hag with a child in her arms, a little misshapen, sickly-looking little thing. They both sat down by the fire to warm themselves. And after some time, the man looked over at the cradle that stood beside the mother's bed with her boy in it, and kept his eyes on it for several minutes. Then he rose, and when the mother saw him walking over direct to the cradle, she fainted and knew no more. When she came to herself, she called to her husband and bade him light a candle. This he did, on which the old hag in the corner rose up at once and blew it out. Then he lit it a second time, and it was blown out. And still a third time he lit the candle, and when again it was blown out, and a great peal of laughter was heard in the darkness. On this, the man grew terribly angry, and taking up the tongs, he made a blow at the hag. But she slipped away and struck him on the arm with a stick she held in her hand. Then he grew more furious and beat her on the head till she roared, when he pushed her outside and locked the door. After this, he lit the candle in peace, but when they looked at the cradle, lo, in the place of their own beautiful boy, a hideous little creature, all covered in hair, lay grinning at them. Great was their grief and lamentation, and both the man and his wife wept and wailed aloud for the loss of their child and the cry of their sorrow was bitter to hear. Just then, the door suddenly opened and a young woman came in with a scarlet handkerchief wound round her head. What are you crying for? she asked at this time of night, when everyone should be asleep. Look at this child in the cradle, answered the man, and you will cease to wonder why we mourn and are sad at heart. And he told her all the story. When the young woman went over to the cradle and looked at the child, she laughed, but said nothing. Your laughter is stranger than our tears, said the man. Why do you laugh in the face of our sorrows? Because, she said, this is my child that was stolen from me tonight. For I am one of the fairy race, and my people, who live under the fort on the hill, thought your boy was a fine child. And so they changed the babies in the cradle. But after all, I would rather have my own, ugly as he is, than any mortal child in the world. So now, I'll tell you how to get back your son and I'll take away mine at once. Go to the old fort on the hill, when the moon is full, and take with you three sheaves of corn and some fire, and burn them one after the other. And when the last sheaf is burning, an old man will come upon through the smoke, and he will ask you what is your desire. Then tell him you must have your child back, or you will burn down the fort, and leave no dwelling place for his people on the hill. Now, the fairies cannot stand against the power of the fire, and they will give you back your child at the mere threat of burning the fort. But mind, take good care of him after, and tie a nail from a horseshoe around his nail, and then he will be safe. With that, the young woman took up the ugly little imp from the cradle in her arms, and was away before they could see how she got out of the house. The next night, when the moon was full, the man went to the old fort and three sheaves of corn and fire and burned them one after the other. And as the second was lighted, there came an old man and asked him what was his desire. 
I must have my child again that was stolen, he answered, or I'll burn down every tree on the hill and not leave you a stone of the ford where you can shelter any more with your fairy kindred. Then the old man vanished, and there was a great silence, but no one appeared. On this the father grew angry, and he called out in a loud voice, I am lifting the third sheaf now, and I'll burn and destroy and make desolate your dwelling place if my child is not returned. Then a great tumult and clamor was heard in the fort, and the voice said, Let it be. The power of the fire is too strong for us. Bring forth the child. And presently the old man appeared, carrying the child in his arms. Take him, he said, by the spell of fire on the corn you have conquered. But take my advice. Draw a circle of fire with a hot coal this night, round the cradle when you go home and the fairy power cannot touch him any more by reason of the fire. So the man did as he was desired, and by the spell of fire and of corn the child was saved from evil, and he grew and prospered. And the old fort stands to this day safe from harm, for the man would allow no hand to move a stone or harm a tree, and the fairies still dance there on them, when the moon is full, to the music of the fairy pipes, and no one hinders them.